Hey, it's all with your reminders for this coming week in Dragonflight. Hit the like button, subscribe for more WoW content, catch me live on Twitch, there's the schedule, and let's start with a few hot fixes in case you missed them. Early in Dragonflight, a skip was added to let people breeze through the early profession quests, but for a while it hasn't been around. It's back for those of you who've been waiting, but well, in case you've done it yourself, it's a fairly quick 20 or so minute thing that also happens to award some starting profession gear. The WoW team has been swinging the nerf bat here and there. The last boss from Court of Stars who does that one move with the translucent air attacks, uh, that's been colored purple for easier viewing. It only took like seven years. I guess they must not have seen it. <laughs> Get it? Nerfs to the Dapia encounter from the Vault of the Incarnate Raid indicate that she's a little bit of a wall for some raid teams. Since my team has only just got to run Heroic, it's a good indication that my guild is exactly the one that the WoW team looks at when it comes to encounter tuning. Thanks, Blizz. This week is a little bit lighter in activity, with the weekly events being Arena Skirmishes and the Pet Battle Bonus event. However, progression-minded folk and big crafting pay attention. The fourth Spark of Ingenuity will be made available this week, enabling folks to craft another epic item for their mains while alts get to dig holes forever trying to catch up. Expect a bump in traffic across trade chat and, if you're lucky, public orders. Meanwhile, join me in my crusade in asking the WoW team for Primal Chaos to be tradable across the account somehow, some way. I can see the usual tradable box being a reasonable compromise. Last week, we got news from the WoW team that the three or four branches per profession would have level requirements reduced in the 1005 patch. That's a ways away, but this basically means you can start specialization into any of the four branches by the time you reach skill level 75. The following I'm about to present is a very brief and bare-bones set of guidelines towards being successful at any specialization across any profession if you're feeling stuck and need a plan, or if you've got an alt and you're just starting to work on their crafting. I'm going to use my low-level leatherworking alt as an example who creates fierce armor kits in bulk. I put all my points into inspiration and bonuses to making armor kits like multicraft. At first, this doesn't look very impressive, but when we look closer at our inspiration, we can see that we have a 30% chance to make the best kinds of armor kits. After achieving that, I started investing into multicraft, and soon I'll be getting into resourcefulness, so I can be a better bulk crafter. Now, not everyone likes this sort of playstyle, but it's working out as a decent moneymaker, and I can use the extra kits to help my guild. I'm trying to get the word out that the inspiration meta is the way to go. Focus on that first, and then go back and apply points to increasing your base skills. Your actual profession skill, like your levels, it's not that big of a deal at all with this method. This applies to consumables like armor kits and potions, as well as gear. So as soon as you meet that threshold to score a rank 5 or a rank 3, public orders are behind you for the most part, and you can start earning some big commissions on trade chat or be an effective bulk seller on the auction house. That's enough of that though, over in Mythic Plus World, the affixes are fortified, spiteful, and grievous. Hmm, this week could suck. Fortified spiteful doesn't feel great, grievous doesn't help, and combined with thundering, this is gonna test your nerves. Folks are gonna have a bit of a time running around crazy avoiding spiteful mobs while trying to cleanse thundering. Healers will hate you. Tanks are gonna care about cleanses too, but otherwise, we're just gonna be watching and having popcorn. At least bosses should feel like a cinch, so try to have fun. As a reminder, folks running 11s and higher are earning primal focus items, while people running 16s and higher are getting concentrated primal focus. Combining these with 100 primal chaos, which you're also getting a lot of if you're running keys, and you get these primal infusions which strengthen your epic crafted gear. Definitely take advantage of these easy to obtain upgrades with your gear. Take these infusions and rank 2 materials, and then seek out a crafter who can create item level 405 gear with the regular infusions and 418s with the concentrated infusions. The WoW team has been picking up momentum with their responses to player concerns, and it's translating into hotfixes, dev notes, and reflections on the upcoming 10.0.5 patch. So far, it's shaping up to be a pretty strong mid-season patch with tons of class changes, cosmetics of all sorts, and straightening things out. For example, the Mage Tower is expected to return in this patch. I'm really looking forward to navigating you through what's going down in a few weeks, so stay tuned by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and catching me live. Until next time, folks, stay safe, stay healthy, and here's your routine. Wasted by life, it's obsession. I'm
writing reputation, I will be denied. Hit that 25 and I'll be famous. I'll be famous. Contract spent, I can't slow down. Rep is who I am, can't do anything else. So don't hold me back. Need that gear, I need that bomb, I need that pen. So I'm gonna make soup, then I'm gonna world boss, then I'm gonna farm more, then I'm gonna not work, my renown will go up, then I'm gonna dig holes, then I'm gonna dig holes, and then I'm gonna dig holes, done.